Lights in Cinema 4D work a lot like the lights in After Effects, but Cinema 4D offers more options. I'm going to show you some of those other options in this lesson. To follow along, go to File, Open, then go to Working Files, Cinema 4D Files, Lights. I set this up with a floor, and I got the floor up here. The floor goes forever. It looks like it has an edge here, but if I render this by pressing Ctrl or Command R, you'll see that it just goes forever. And I did this so you get a little bit of perspective so you can see distance better. Then I added this tube here that we're going to use when we talk about certain kinds of lights and shadows. I want to turn the tube off for the moment here. And now I want to add some lights. And the lights are up here. If I click and hold this, you'll see there are six lights, or at least it looks like there are six lights. In fact, there are only two. There's a light object, and the light object has four light types. The four light types are spot, area, and infinite. And then there's sunlight, which is a specialized light. And this other light, target light, is in fact a light object with a target tag. I'm going to talk about how you use target tags with lights and cameras in a separate lesson, and I'll cover the sunlight in a separate lesson as well. So if I click on light here, that'll add a light object. And right off the bat, you may be wondering, what kind of a light is this when it's black? That's because the light is located at the origin by default, and the origin is inside the ground. So I'm going to take this guy and lift it up just a little bit like that, and now you can begin to see the light. I'll click on light here so we can look at its properties. We'll go to General here. You can change its color. I'll click on that. Make it slightly warmer by clicking over there and just making it a little bit warmer like that. You can see the immediate difference there. I'll hoist it up a little bit higher. When I click away like this, by the way, that is how the rendered light will look. If I do Control or Command R, you'll see that it's no different other than seeing the floor off in the distance. Click on Light again. You can change the intensity. 100% is default. You can make it more than 100% and less than zero. Take it back to the default by right-clicking on the stubble arrow there. That takes you back to 100%. I want to show you the three other main types of lights here inside the light object. Right now we're working with the Omni light, which, as I mentioned, is kind of confusing. Up here it says light, when in fact it should say Omni, I think. And then spot, area, infinite probably don't even need to be there, because when you click on this light, you have the choice of them down here. So let's change from Omni here to infinite. Infinite is the same as the parallel light in After Effects. And right now you're again wondering, why is it black? That's because it's a straight line, and now it's above the floor. If I put the tube in there like that, the light's inside the tube, but it seems to be illuminating it from the outside. That's because an infinite light comes from infinity and goes to infinity. It doesn't make a difference where you position it relative to an object. I'll just click on light here. I can move it back and forth like this, and it won't change the illumination. Because the light is, in fact, going along this line here, which by default is along the z-axis. But if I start rotating it around, you'll see what happens here. I'll grab the rotate tool here. I'll rotate it around like this, and notice that it's coming like that. And in fact, that it's off to the side like this is not important. The light still is coming off from a distance here and going like that. Like this. Now it's coming from the other side, like that. If I put it inside here, it's not going to suddenly disappear. I'll click on you and put it inside. And we'll rotate it again, and it's still infinite. This little tube is not going to cut it off. Let's change again from infinite to Spot, and you've seen the Spotlight inside After Effects. Works similarly. The light, by default, aims down the z-axis again. Let's rotate it a bit like this, and we'll pull it back a bit. Turn the scene around a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. And I see that it's pointing straight at the tube. I'm going to lift it up, and the center will go up with the light. If you want to point it down, you need to rotate it down, like so. These little orange dots control the outer angle. You can expand it or contract it. Then there's an inner angle that's kind of tricky to access. So you click on Light and go to Details, and then there's an inner angle there. Just expand it a little bit, and now you can see it. The inner angle defines how hard the edge is. If you go all the way to the edge of a hard edge light, go inside, you soften the edge a little bit like that. All right, let's switch to what's called the Area Light. So I click back on You, go to General, and I switch here to Area. Area is something you haven't seen inside After Effects. Area is kind of like a soft box that has two sides. The light goes on both sides of this rectangle. Let me turn the scene around a little bit here so you can see it. So light emanates both directions, this way and this way from this rectangular thing. You can't really tell from here. You have to render it to see it. So I'll do Control or Command R, and it takes a little bit longer to render. It puts this little line down there where the rectangle is. So light does not fall up or down or around the rectangle, but it falls on both sides of the rectangle. So why would you want this line going through there? Well, you probably wouldn't. You want to tilt it up a little bit to illuminate the scene like a softbox. So click away there. We'll take this guy and click on you again, make you active. Now I'll render this again, Control or Command R. Now you can see it does illuminate the scene. There's the line right there, though. So you do want to watch that when you use the area light. There are different modes to the area light. 
go to details and you can change it from an area shape of rectangle which is default to many other shapes the sphere throws light everywhere and the cylinder kind of narrows it down into a circle all right i want to go back and look at some of the other properties so click on general here i'm going to switch back to the omni light to see the shadow you need to render it so i'm going to position the seam a little bit differently here and pull it down like so and i'm going to now turn on shadow there are different options there's soft hard and area click on soft and you won't see any shadows yet. You need to turn on the interactive render region by pressing Alt or Option R. And there's that shadow. Let me pull this up a little bit here. Pretty distinctive shadow there, but notice how it has a soft edge to it. Change to the ray trace mode and it's going to be a hard edge. Right now it's aliased, but that's because it's not being rendered at the highest setting. And finally, there's the area shadow, which at first glance may not look all that appealing because the edge seems to be kind of rough. But in fact, it's the most accurate of all three shadow types. That's because it calculates the softness of the edge based upon the distance from the object, unlike the shadow maps soft method, which uses the same width of softness around its edge. Because of these extra calculations, the area shadow does take a little bit longer to render, but also I think the shadow maps soft method is just a little bit more intuitive, a little bit easier to deal with, so I recommend you stick with the shadow maps soft shadow. Because shadows require rendering, I'm going to turn the shadow option to none and turn off the interactive render region by pressing Alter Option R. Visible light means that you can see the glow of the light. Right now you're seeing the reflection of the light, not the glow. So if you have visible, then you can see the glow of it. So I click on visible. I won't see anything yet, but I'll now render it. Control or Command R, and I see the glow of the light. I want to put the light inside the tube. Turn off visible for the moment so I can get a better handle on the light. I'm going to put it inside the tube like this. I'll put it down inside the tube. Now they're in the tube. Let me turn on visible light. Back over here, click on the lights, turn on visible. And now I'm going to render that. Control Command R. And you can see the glow of that light. I want to change it to volumetric visible, which is kind of a cool look. It's more like a smoky room here. Volumetric. Control Command R. It relates a little bit more to the object that it's in. And finally, I'll do inverse volumetric, which glows on the outside. It won't glow on the inside, it'll glow on the outside. Control Command R like that. It's going outside the object. Now notice that there's still a reflection of the light off the floor. That's because it's illuminated. So you have the choice of having visible light and or illumination. If I turn off illumination and then render it again, Controller Command R, you get this glow still, but you also get the default lighting, the default ambient lighting of the entire scene. Since you have no light illuminating the scene, that goes back to the default ambient light that's on inside your preferences, which you probably wouldn't turn off anyways. So if you want to use no illumination for a light, you need some other light somewhere to compensate for that. I'll go back to the normal setting of none, and I'll also have illumination like that. You can have ambient illumination, which equals the ambient light inside After Effects. That just illuminates everything evenly. And you can control the intensity here, which you can't do with the default light. So you can bring that down. And typically you use an ambient light kind of when you're done lighting a scene, just to give it a little bit of light so you can see everything. There you go. Put that back to full like that. And I'll turn off ambient illumination so you get sort of the final look here. You can see how the light goes in and out of that little tube like that. So there you go. That's a rundown on the light object and its four light types.